Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome back to this special edition of 2016 New Hampshire statewide primary election results coverage. We do have um, an announcement to make. Kelly Ayotte wins GOP nomination for Senate. That result came in not too long ago, and we're announcing Kelly Ayotte is the winner of the U.S. Senate for the GOP. We're still waiting on results for governor for Democratic side and governor for the Republican side, and also we're still waiting for U.S. House District for the Republican side and U.S. House District for the GOP as well. Let's go and listen into Heather Hamill from Channel 9. With friends and family and enjoying some food and I have Mr. Flanagan with me right now and it, it's nice to have these supporters here in the background here. It seems like a small... A small group, but definitely a supportive and, group. And welcome to Brookline, Heather. It's, it's great to have you here, too. Yeah, it, I, I invited friends, family, supporters, even some people that donated. And uh, we're looking forward to the results to come in and uh, truly optimistic. I mean, we've uh, been along six, seven, eight months now, and we're waiting to see how uh, the voters uh, feel. Now, I know you don't have that name recognition like some candidates, but you definitely have that record of public service. Talk to me about that, and why do you feel that that's what New Hampshire needs? Well, I mean, it started locally. School board, there's a fellow school board members here and selectmen that I served with and finance committee people, uh, and it gave me that foundation. And then I got enticed to Concord to run in Concord, and then uh, we did some good things there and became majority leader. So uh, yeah, I think it gives me a really solid background. I, too, have children. I, too, have businesses that I've started. But, you know, this is really what we've been waiting for, and hopefully the numbers will come through and, and we'll go on to fight Annie Custer and... Uh, in November. You said the response has been good so far. You were out and about today all yeah, day. All day. Uh, people, uh, like I said earlier, the debates were key. Um, we did a mailer. Um, we did some digital media too. So hopefully that'll all pay off. And we're looking forward to 10 o'clock, I guess, all when right. the true numbers come in. Thank you so much, Representative yeah, Flanagan. You, all right. And so that was Representative Jack, Jack Flanagan. He's feeling very optimistic right now with a gathering of supporters, family, and friends. They're enjoying themselves. And uh, like he said, he's remaining upbeat, just waiting for those results to come in. For now, reporting live in Brookline, Heather Hamels of MUR News 9. I love the fire department News. down there. By the way, political activism. Okay, and there you go. That was Jack Flanagan speaking with Heather Hamill from Chill 9. Um, so we're still waiting your results for GOP, for Democratic Governor, Republican Governor, U.S. House District, GOP East and South, and U.S. House District 2, GOP West and North. Once we get those results, we'll tell you who are the winner from each area. Ashu takes early lead over Ginta in 1st District. Early returns showed a tight hair goes a lot. race for the Republican nomination for 1st Congressional District with challenger Rich Ashu taking a lead over incumbent Rep. Frank Ginta with 13% of the percents. Reporting Ashu had 48% of the vote compared to 46% with for Ginta. The race for the Republican nomination in 1st Congressional District features an incumbent who has served two terms and a businessman who hopes to knock him out of Congress.
Lawrence leads Flanagan in second, returns in second district. In early returns, former state rep Jim Lawrence took lead over state rep Jack Flanagan in the race for the Republican nomination in second congressional district, with 7% of participants reporting Lawrence led Flanagan 38 to 32%. And let's listen in back to Channel 9 with Josh Smith Hilton speaking right now. Towns in the middle of the, of the district. I'm curious, uh, if people look back to the 2010, that's when the campaign violation occurred. A lot of people felt like that uh, Frank into that put him over the top, that late money coming in. Uh, he was in a primary race then against Sean Mahoney, uh, uh, Bob Destani, Rich Ash, who uh, he was running against, too. Uh, any indication that there's some former Mahoney supporters who might still remember that and think, you know what, I'm an Asher guy? Well, I, I think that was one of the things that, that both the Ashu and the Mahoney people thought after that election was that one or the other hadn't been in the race, that either Ashu or Mahoney would have beaten Ginta in that race in 2010. And there's some evidence that that's the case, uh, but uh, the turnout is lower this time around than it was in 2010. And it's really difficult to try to figure out what's going to go on. These small towns in the center of the state where somebody can win by 10, 20 um, uh, votes, and those things start to add up in a low turnout election. So I think it's too easy, too early right now for us to make any assessments, but it's certainly something to bear watching. And as you always say, it's a uh, low turnout benefits the incumbent. Well, it, it does and it doesn't. It, it benefits the incumbent if they're popular. But if the incumbent's not popular, and certainly Ginta is not a popular incumbent, his, uh, his net favorability rating among Republicans is only plus 9%. Right. In that kind of a race where Republican, remember the Republican establishment came out very strongly against Ginta um, earlier this spring when the FEC announcement came out. If those regular mainstream Republicans come out and vote, that's going to help ask you. Uh, even though he's not as well known as Ginta, uh, I think those people who are active as voters are going to recognize his name. And of course, we have the governor's race now. The way the numbers are coming in right now, Ted Gatsis, uh, he did well in Manchester. He has to do well in Manchester. What are we seeing in terms of the other quote unquote big name in the Republican field being Chris Sununu? Well, Chris Sununu is, is trailing right now, but we have to be careful because sure. Manchester's coming, and that's really driving yeah. all of the poll numbers right now. As some of the sea, uh, the towns in the Seacoast start to come in, uh, Nashua hasn't come in yet. Um, the, certainly the north part of the state hasn't come in at all yet. When these towns come start to come in, we'll see a Sununu and the, the organization that was built both by his father and by his brother, John Sununu, to see how that plays out. That's going to be the interesting thing because Gatsis has certainly been as an organization in Manchester and he has name recognition in that area. But once you get outside of that area of the state, his recognition drops fairly quickly. And this is where we'll have to wait to see how Sunu is able to come by. It is interesting right now that uh, Frank Adelblut is doing quite well. He's got his uh, name right up there. So in a multi-way campaign, we still have a lot to Yeah, I mean, you go, to you go out to these events and you hear people talk about, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a senior new guy. But you know who really impressed me, though, was Frank Edelblut. He's been working really hard. We'll see how he does tonight. And probably, if he isn't successful, probably see him again. Well, I think that's one of the things that any candidate running for office, major office in New Hampshire, has to do is plan on running twice. All right. I'll keep a post on the numbers. Guys, back to you. Okay, there you go. That was with Josh McKelvin and his guests speaking right now. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. 